Welcome to the Nexus Unloaded podcast. This is Will Crozier. And I'm Zach Congonis. We are here to bring you the best solutions to your lifting problems. Through our real world experience, we hope to break things down in a digestible, applicable, and entertaining way. Today, we are talking about single lift preps uh, and the differences between them and a three lift competition prep. Uh, this question came up because of our deadlift for dog competition that we had, which was a deadlift only uh, comp. And we had a lot of people competing in that that had never done a single lift comp before that wanted to to know, like, uh, what's the difference between when they're trying to do trying to peak squat, bench, and deadlift versus, versus just peaking the deadlift. So things like uh, the difference in length but of it, how does it change a, a peak or a taper, uh, the allocation of workload between, you know, obviously we've just got one lift to focus on, so how does that change the other lifts and, and how should we go about that? How do we pick accessories? How do we pick attempts? Uh, we cover all of those in this episode, so enjoy. My drink. So, country music. I believe it's an, <laughs> <laughs> it's an underappreciated art form in the powerlifting scene. Mm. What are your thoughts on that? Before they know... Because <laughs> I know... Is when, this the um, part where I respond? I expected there to no. be more there, sorry. No, this is, the, this is just the beginning. This is the beginning of the monologue on country music. Because I know when okay. um, we were in the car of Anthony, Anthony put on that mm. absolute banger of a country song. And I thoroughly appreciate that. I think it was more it. blues, but yeah. Yeah, I yeah, think he was blues. Country blues. Anthony actually surprised me with his um, taste, you know? Because when I, when I watch all of his lifting videos in the background, we talk about Anthony way too much, by the way. <laughs> but in the background of his music video, uh, in all of his lifting videos, you know, it's like um, uh, Lamb of God is a, is a big one on rotation, I noticed for him. Uh, but a lot of, you know, hardcore, uh, you know, type of screamo y medley type music. Um, so when we got in the car to pick yourself up to the airport and we had a whole almost... <laughs> Yeah, forty five minutes to spare because we didn't get the memo that um your flight was delayed. So thanks thanks a lot for that. Um That's we right. uh, My pleasure. I got the pleasure to listen to a wide variety and, and everything from really I think we heard some old school hip hop. We definitely went into blues uh on the way, like really like, you know, proper um uh, blues with the what's the little harmonica uh, instrument? Yeah, yeah, some of that shit. And then what we will listen to on the way home with you um, that you got into? It's good old, good old fashioned country. Singing about tractors. Yeah, okay. Tractors, ex girlfriends, ex wives, and beers. Yeah, the so three we had tenets quite... of country music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, what? So you're a country music man? I'm a big fan. I think it's, it's smooth listening. I had a big phase During where I sessions, hit... though? 100%. I had a big phase where I'd put achy, breaky heart on for all of my squats. I oh, my yeah, first, that's a classic. My first 300 kilo squat Billy, was to achy, Billy breaky heart. It was fucking fantastic. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I just think that Crazy. it's, like a, when it's I was a public young, service announcement. Listen to some country music. My, yeah, my father, when I was young, like we, he's a big country music guy. I grew up in a country town. And um, uh, I actually went, uh, I was a big country music kid and went, went along to... Um, a Lee Koenigan concert. I Why have that. I never heard about uh, this before? Yeah, in the Central Coast, I remember it. And then I remember it and was, you know, got got photos with him. I've got photos. Mickey, you can find them. Um, and yeah, a bit of that, a bit of Slim Dusty. You also you know, wore an Akubra. I did. And a flannel. <laughs> like, a, like a kid's flannel. Um, full cowboy mode. Yeah. This so. is fucking brilliant. I feel like yeah, we I should revive it. this look. Yeah. Imagine rocking up the comp, <laughs> bust out of the Akubra, get a flannel nah. shirt underneath your soft suit. I reckon it'd be the best thing since sliced bread. Oh, the, the problem is now I just run too hot. So if I chuck a flannel on, I have to cut like, <laughs> I need to turn it into a stringer pretty much to be able to like not overheat and, and cark it, you know? So, you know, it's, it's just not a, it's just not a great look. With a flannel, you need the long sleeves. You know, I need to, I need to move to Melbourne, come down there with you or something where you can just be the flannel gang. Be uh, now that Dean's moved. Yeah. Yeah, for hips of flannel, for sure. Yeah, yeah. It's um, like you're wearing it ironically, but it's not ironic. It's like, I'm wearing this because it's cool, but it's also cool because it's not cool. That's Melbourne chic right there. Tuck it into my shorts as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it, uh, I wanted to talk also about uh, a new addition to the Nexus um, lineup of things that we 
We sell. It's fi- <laughs> we finally we come out with a rubberized squat plug. They are no. a flap. Oh, different thing. Uh, as we described me. them when we first got them, the <laughs> flaps, uh, the flippers. Um, but uh, I always really much liked the Versa Grip like kind of strap. I hate the long ones. They're annoying. You kind of like have to. Did you want to describe to the people who aren't watching exactly what they look yeah. like? Just give us a brief rundown of the form factor, the girth, diameter, the padding, yeah. all the pieces. Yeah, you have this this kind of loop that, that with a Velcro strap that you um, put over your hand that goes around your wrist, and then it Velcros on nice and cleanly. We we did get prototypes that were too short, and then we also then we asked for them to be longer, and they were way too long, and they just hang over and destroyed your thighs. So these yeah, you don't want we asked your, for the Goldilocks version. You flip it a bit um, too long. That are just in between. No, 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 no. Especially no. And then, uh, and then, <laughs> first world problems here. And then, uh, yeah, they they fit nice and snugly around your wrist, um, and uh, just can't really slide off. Anthony did a good job of testing it with a four hundred kilo deadlift, uh, a deadlift of dogs, and they held up well. I, I was hope so. That'd be the worst product. They didn't launch of break all time if they just snapped in half. Yeah. And then the the rubber uh, premium lu- premium rubber with hand stitched. It's uh, um, it's together. faux it's Quite faux leather. It's premium faux leather. That's what it is. <laughs> Absolutely, you would not you would not you would not find a grippier. It's not leather. Mickey will Mickey was. It is not leather. Me, Mickey's as soon as I saw yeah, her face. It's, she faux, said it's leather. faux leather. rubber. It's, it's faux as leather. soon as you. It's not leather. It's whatever in the you slightest. want it to be. It, it's it's whatever you want it to be. Use your imagination, but it will it wraps around the bar under the bar just like your thumb would in a hook grip scenario rubber um, really nice grippy rubber so that you can grab it and it will not slip off um, it's got and, a great hand feel yeah, it, for all those who enjoy will, textures yeah and <laughs> a, a nice little for the people who are watching on the YouTubes um, a nice hand stitch by myself blood sweat and tears went into it um, every little stitch by me uh, little Nexus logo on it um so, yeah, it just. So if no one's if you, clear if you to want to lift, with. if you want to lift four hundred kilos like Anthony, I, I mean, usually I would say get some good programming, get some good technique advice, listen to all of our episodes, and, and educate yourself. So but just the straps. Before you do all that, you should just, yeah just get the straps, and that'll probably, probably I think almost the, get you there. Actually, I would say. the most important thing to note as well, if you want to put it back on, will the uh, little flippy flap noise that you can make between sets. I feel like you should preview oh, what it sounds like because this oh, is I used really. To do that all the time. I believe the sound's anabolic, just because of the tone the and frequency. Just do it right next to the mic. The just give it a nice yeah, little flap. Nah, you gotta smack this up in the face. <laughs> Did it work? No. <laughs> nah, the mic's too sensitive. I, I implore everyone to go and look at that to video. <laughs> that just if you're, if you're if you're just listening to this, you need to watch this man take off his headphones uh. and then aggressively jerk his arm back and forth. <laughs> Traffic yeah. to our YouTube no, has increased that... by two hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, only straps. Um, yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think that wraps it up. I think that was great. Yeah, yeah so available on our website. Wraps it up. Forty bucks. It'll um. <laughs> It'll uh, it, it won't yeah well worth getting an extra you know I don't I don't want to guarantee numbers but probably another fifty percent of your deadlift from this one <laughs> no uh, highly highly cannot emphasize enough many asterisks next to that that uh, statement uh, yeah. not a guarantee but if but you don't get the fifty percent it's entirely it. your fault like you're just not I, I believe I believe you could if 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 the if the situation was right you could definitely get that um. What else have we got going? Uh, the the new nutrition service. We Mickey has been slaving away. Mickey at and Jordan. Introducing, Can't forget Jordan. And Jordan. And Jordan. And Jordan. Both working and together. Jordan. Our nutrition coaches, Mickey and Jordan, working together to come up with a new uh, nutrition service to fill a gap. Um, nutrition at the moment for us at Nexus has two different levels, where uh, depending on your your requirements or your goals what you need from uh, a nutrition coach, uh, you would be funneled into one of the two services to get the most out of it, to get the, the most bang for buck. Uh, we are putting in basically like a lower tier nutrition service for people out there who maybe don't need as much education around it um, and need a bit more just a general accountability towards nutrition as we find there are a lot of people in that bucket 
that uh, you know don't want to pay a premium for nutrition. They know how to do it, but they just just need a bit of guidance, a little bit of support along the way. Simply, simply put, it is uh, a nutrition coaching service for someone who is already being coached and understands nutrition fundamentally, mm-hmm. but needs additional support and accountability um, yep. to a, a lower degree. Yeah, so so that. Uh, hasn't been announced formally yet, but that uh, if for the people listening to the podcast, um, first dibs on that. So uh, you know, watch out on our through our social channels um, and and soon to be on our website for that service to be up there. We'll be doing a test trial uh, test run first for everyone, um, and then it'll be launched. What we should do is we should year. select the test trial participants from the podcast listeners. That's an idea. I think that's a fucking fantastic right. idea. This is why I want the big bucks. Cool. If you're interested, right absolutely reach out and you could potentially be in the beta test and um, and get it at a... Call it uh, the alpha uh, test. Alpha some sort of call them beta. The alpha test and um, <laughs> and get uh, you know some sort of discount towards it and um, and start your nutrition journey if, if, it's, if it's something that you need, but, but you haven't found the right service for you yet. Um, so that leads us to our actual topic for the day, which I'm trying to read, uh, but uh, we have got... <laughs> single lift, s- single lift meter runes. Single lifts. Yeah, so the question, uh, there wasn't actually a direct question that came in, but just a, a multitude of questions across many different people that competed primarily at the, the deadlift for dogs comp that we ran that was a, a you know, single lift. You know, it was only for deadlifts. It wasn't a typical powerlifting comp where you do squat, bench, and deadlift. Just three attempts at deadlift, and, and that was the competition there. Wait, so, so a single um, lift a meet only has one lift? I know, it's hard to believe. But, I'm glad um, you expl- I'm glad you explained the, that. I was, I was lost for a second there. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the... <laughs> People usually, unless you're unless you're like Zach, uh, usually aren't lost on the the concept of a single lift, but are more are sometimes a little bit lost with the process of it because um, a lot of powerlifting comp uh, programs are obviously like based on on three lift comps. So you know you're squatting once or twice a week, you're deadlifting once or twice a week, you're benching typically two or three times a week in a typical powerlifting program, and uh, depending on your your requirements as a lifter. Uh, where you're at, what your goals, all that stuff. Like you, would, you your coach would hopefully individualize it um, and and make that work. But in a single lift comp, there are a couple more there are a couple more things to consider because um, now we have we don't have to worry about squat anymore. We don't have to worry about bench anymore, or, or in, in a deadlift only case. Depends on which or, one you do. In a bench only case, we don't have to worry about squatting or, or deadlifting. So. Um, you know, there are, there are additional considerations and ways we can make it more effective for that single lift if we know it is a single lift comp. So today, um, to answer the different questions that we got over that prep and, and from our audience around single lifts, we're going to talk through some of those considerations. I think the first consideration and the most important thing to say, as somebody who loves a good squat, why is squats oh, ex- why are squats excluded from single lift meets? I know that Mickey just trolled through Reddit to find an answer for us, but oh, um, Mickey why do bench and the deadlifts of Reddit is now swallowed by Reddit? Um, <laughs> why <coughs> does a single lift squat not exist? I'll give my opinion in a second, but Mickey all, with the official. All I could find, um, and this was just purely speculating through through Reddit, oh. was that um, because there is more equipment required um, to, I'm assuming if someone's using a monolift or something like that, so there's slightly more equipment required or heavier duty equipment required for a squat only event. And uh, additionally, it, there's more risks involved in squatting in terms of a safety more and liability sp- standpoint than there is with the other lifts. Okay. So those sure were the, that, was the, that was the main thing that came up was that there was just more liability. Well, we do at Nexus have some clients who have been powerlifting for decades, for 30 years in some instances. So might reach out to them and ask them about um, their opinion. Cause I would have, but in my opinion, it's just cause squatting sucks and um, <laughs> nobody likes squatting. <laughs> and uh, you know, that's certainly not biased at all. It's just, um, it's, it's, it's just the, f- just complete fact. Right. So um, I think that's that. Fair. I found one other thing here as well. <sighs> It says, if you can pull off a heavy squat, you can most likely do the others, whereas the others are suited for people that... <laughs> that person has no idea what they're talking about. Whatever. The, the others are suited for bad lift. power lifters. That person has no idea. Ignore Was that, that back person. on Reddit, Mickey? Um, yeah, 
block that person straight away. What was away. his username? Definitely. I'm curious to know. Probably S- Squat King or some shit. It literally has deleted. Uh, yeah, yeah, see, that they got, they got banned for that comment. That's how bad it was. <laughs> but yeah, bench only I get because like if you have some sort of knee problems that, you know, your knees just don't work at all or you've got really bad knees, bad hip, bad, bad ankles, then we'll give you the... You know, we'll give you something. <laughs> like you can, you know, you, you can can't do the, the others. You can have the scraps of powerlifting, aka the bench yeah, press. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, you can. We'll push you towards that. You'll be right. Um, and bench specialists are are super exciting because when you take away squatting, that that massive amount of stress that goes through the shoulders, like bench just goes up like ten percent, like instantly. And then when you when you you, you look at the, the the bench specialists, like they usually have shoulders the size of my head. And are just <laughs> thick, thick just boys. Why they're as and thick they, as they are deep. Yeah, and they just typically like, can't even get under a squat bar and, and literally do a squat to comp standard anyway. So they like it. It is truly a thing that you can super specialize in. Um, then there's deadlift only to superior of the onlys, uh, and uh, what, obviously what we lent towards in deadlift for dogs, not just because of the 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 alliteration, but um. <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, you know, there's a, again, just um, I think there are more people that have injuries that stop them squatting than squatting than, than, than stop them deadlifting. I think most people can get away with it doing a deadlift um, than they can squatting, but that can definitely be argued. But I think we just stick with the you know squat suck deadlift the best analogy, uh, you know, explanation and stick with that. Yeah. So squat suck to, deadlift to the bench and then so deadlift to the best. I can tell in your face that you don't scrap. accept that, but I, I don't know. I just Look think for, you go with it. Personally, for someone whose entire total was built on a shoddy squat and a terrible bench, <laughs> I have to say squats are king. Uh, however, they do suck to do. I will admit that. <laughs> and is it true that that Reddit comment was you? Yes. <laughs> yes, it was. I <laughs> got on there real quick. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> You've been banned. All right. <laughs> Instaban. Um... Let's get back to the actual topic. So the differences between uh, a three lift prep um, and what uh, you know a single lift prep might be. So um, yeah, kick us off with it. Like, but in your mind, like, what's the first thing that you think of that maybe people should consider doing differently if they're looking to program themselves for a single lift comp? Like, what, what different considerations what they should make, um, or just if they want to be educated on it and they they're, they're considering, it. or maybe they've got clients if they're coaches. Um, what should, what should you be looking at? What are the differences? I think for the most part, the preps turn out rather similar. In my head, the first thing and the biggest thing to take into account is what's the primary goal? So if it, is it bench or deadlift only? That'll decide quite a lot of the things for you. If you're doing yes, a it bench will. only and you start only doing deadlifts, you've that, fucked it up. Um, that is a once big you've one. decided that <laughs> primary goal, what's different between yeah. these single, lap, single lift preps and other preps is you can have secondary goals that run alongside it. With a three-lift meet, there's not a whole lot of spare volume left over. So if you're thinking, sweet, mm. I've got a squat, bench, and deadlift, I've got to do them all kind of well. If you're doing a bench-only meet, you can allocate a bit more volume to, say, improving a deadlift or improving a squat in a different way, using different variations yeah. or even improving... Because you've only got finite volume. You've only got finite training dose. I've caught it in the past. You've only got so much that you can recover from, yeah? You've got a bucket of volume. Like, Imagine like a bucket of crawdads. You've only got 86 crawdads to devote to your prep. <laughs> if, if each lift requires 15 crawdads, then you haven't got much left mm. over. If you're doing bench only, you can allocate at least 50 crawdads to that lift. I think that really clears it up for people. But <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Essentially, like there is there's a certain amount of volume that you can recover from in a week. And this comes down to a multitude of factors around your life how much stress is going on externally, how good your nutrition is, uh, how good your sleep is. Uh, We've covered this in previous episodes around recovery factors. Um, Genetics even straight in there, like how efficient that lift is, like how much, how much, you know, fatigue per set is going into that, which, which again is a a different thing. Um, But you're going to have a certain amount of work that you can, that you can do before you start just going backwards each week because fatigue is accumulating at a rate that you can't recover from it. Um, most, like you said, most of the principles in these preps, they're pretty similar, like the, the length of a prep. So like, I mean, it's hard because some people will say like, Oh, an off season doesn't exist, bro. We're never off. We're always fucking training for a meet. Cool. 
you know, stand on your high horse, do whatever. That's awesome. Great for you. But, you know, we typically refer to an off-season as like a less specific phase when before you get into the time when comp becomes like your main priority and specificity ramps up. So the SBD is like your entire focus and maybe there's less focus on other things like you know, general hypertrophy or general conditioning. Or health. Um, so... <laughs> Yeah, health, whatever. But yeah, it, the, the health usually gets roped in there with those others. But yeah, difference in length is probably not going to be a whole lot different. Like you're going to, most people will draw the line at like 12 weeks uh, just because it's a nice round, you know, three months. Um, it, it allows for two to three blocks depending on how you're running your programming, uh, which is plenty of time to kind of phase in, uh, you know, move from less specific work to more specific work, uh, start allocate more volume towards SBD, or in this case, just the one lift, uh, you're moving on that spectrum. So, so the difference in length doesn't change a whole lot. The one thing, that, the one side bit I'll add to that, the, the difference in length um, conversation is, is maybe that you can get away with a bit shorter of a run. Like if you're doing a more general off season and it's just like, fuck, I, uh, yeah, I've decided to do this bench only me and I've, I've only, I'm, I've, it's only six weeks away. Typically for a person, if they said that to me and it was an SBD comp, if it was a three-lift comp, I'd say, look, it's, yeah, like, uh, yeah, you, you can, but like maybe accept that it's just not going to be like at your potential. Like we're going to miss out on a bit here. We don't have time to ramp in. We're just going to have to jump in the deep end and, and fucking hope this shit comes together. <laughs> Whereas in a bench prep and stuff like that, since we don't have to worry about squat, since we don't have to worry about deadlift, now we can go like, all right, we're just going to bench like four times a week and like have maybe, you know, phase, like obviously set those four days up so that they have slightly different goals maybe in a, in a DP type fashion or whatever so that it's more recoverable. But you're going to be able to kind of like, as you said, give all the crawdads to the, to the one <laughs> lift so that um, so the person's skill uh, uh, kind of moves up quite quickly and they get more efficient and, and, um, and better results from that lift and able to peak that lift a mm. lot quicker uh, if, if, the need, if need be. But preferably, like I said... Preferably, we still just have this, uh, a decent amount of time. A nice way to kind of visualize that as well <clears throat> is thinking, <laughs> cool, it, no, no more crawdads. If you have a normal... Okay, that's week, where I was going. I was like, if you're just going to describe a fucking... <laughs> if you're, if, you're if we doing... spend five minutes describing it, I'm out, you know? <laughs> if you're doing, say, a 12-week peak and run in for a three-lift meet, you can break up how many exposures or sessions you get for each of those lifts. So you're training four days a week, you're doing two bench sessions, two one squat session, one deadlift session, whatever it is, you get 12 exposures to a squat. You get 24 exposures to a de- to a bench press. There's probably a yeah. certain number of exposures to that lift that you need to get half decent at doing it. So if you're thinking, cool, mm. it's not a perfect science, but if you've doubled the volume and the exposure of your bench press, you probably don't need as much time if you're kind of putting it right, in that definitely, sense. Definitely don't. But um, like I said, like uh, you're... If, if it's a shorter time, you're risking a little bit more because you don't have enough like trial and error time to like mm. see what works, what doesn't work. And ideally, you're constantly year round doing like kind of little trial and errors and see what works and doesn't yeah. work. But and previous comp experiences and such. But, but like still, you're not troubleshooting still, there's, that, that, things. there's a little bit more risk. Yeah, you're not yes. troubleshooting yes. things on a six. If you're doing a six week lead in, it's like, fuck, whatever you're doing now is what you're going to do on the, on the platform. Nothing's changing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and next, we have like, does it, does it change? So we've gone through like our general prep and then usually from, uh, we haven't really done an episode on peaking or anything in particular, but like, so, so what, what is peaking? Peaking is like getting you prepared to do what you're going to do at the competition. So like most people in their off season or whatever, will will train like fives or sixes or something like that, but you lose the skill quite quickly, um, but regain it quite quickly as well of lifting just really, really heavy shit. So, like, to get good at lifting one very, very heavy rep is a skill and it's something that you're going to need to practice and that's what peaking is the process of, is getting that practice in, getting really good at that, both physically but also mentally. So, like, having the confidence to get under it, to not lose your shit when you put, you know, a one RM on your back, I think is an underrated skill. Um, and uh, and then dealing with the, the fatigue that comes into it. So, like, uh, you know, peaking is also the process of, like, coming into it f- fresher and, and not having a bunch of fatigue that's um that's masking your performance on the day as well. Um, so the, the, that's that's essentially what peaking is. And tapering, if we define that as well, is is that 
is that tapering of volume usually uh, into a comp, usually around, for most people I find like three or four weeks um, is plenty, but there's a bunch of factors that come into it that we might do in a, in a different episode. But tapering uh, is, is that process of starting to pull back primarily volume um, so that your your recovery can come up and your fatigue is going to go down and then your your performance in the on those singles at competition you know is going to get better and better and then you come in on the day feeling like you can run through walls and um and smash it you should be coming in like confident as fuck uh, yeah. so it's, it's a, it is a mental and physical thing both the, the taper and the peak um does it change for a single lift what are your thoughts on that i don't really think so i think that the difference between individuals probably supersedes the type of meat so some people may need a longer taper and a different style of peak vice versa, depending on how much weight they're lifting, yep. how long they've been lifting for. I think those individual factors beat how many lifts you're doing in that meet. So if someone generally mm-hmm. needs a little bit more time to recover because their recovery is dog shit, they get a slightly longer taper, whether it's a single lift or a three lift. Will it change based off the fact that, hey, you're lifting far less weight in one of them? Probably. If you're not squatting and you're not as beat up, you might not need as long as a ta- as long of a taper but the act of peaking is pretty much the same across the board. You just get really good at doing singles and you try not to have so much volume that you can't be good at doing singles. Yeah, there's a... When you're doing a three-lift comp, you're, you've got a, like a fatigue curve to each of the lifts. Like, each time you... If, if you try to do a squat today and then a deadlift session tomorrow, like, although they're different lifts, like there's a lot of interplay as far as like the muscles involved and like your low back, especially, but like your low back hips, those sort of areas are, uh, are not going to be fully recovered. And so you're not going to be able to perform the best on, on the second of the two. Um, so usually when you're laying out a training week and, you know, allocating volume, allocating intensity, it's kind of like uh, there's the, you're also questioning, am I, do I have enough time between sessions to recover? Is this session affecting that one negatively? Uh, or, or especially in a cumulative thing over the course of weeks. Um, and, but when you're only doing one lift and, and it's say you're just doing it like a deadlift only, there's less of that. So it's just a little bit, I would, I would say easier to not because the taper or peak is different, but because it's just like a little bit easier to see. Like there's this, there's less noise in the signal. There's like, uh, hey, you're no longer wondering, is my deadlift shit today because I squatted two or three days ago and I maybe did some accessories or I did this or I did that. And, and now it's like, well, you know, like there's, there's just less, there's less variables going on. It's easier to see yeah. like what's causing fatigue and, and what I need to change. There's a lot so, less interplay. It's like if you imagine putting yeah. three, three crawdads on a bench, trying to catch all three crawdads, <laughs> it's pretty difficult. Yes. Whereas if there's only one crawdad, you know where it is, it's more predictable as to where it's going, and you can make decisions <laughs> probably a bit further into the future. <laughs> again, again, just clearing stuff up. You're on fire today with your I just analogies. Like, I just, just yeah. like saying crawdad. For, for background, I was listening to a country <laughs> song right before we got on this, yeah, and Homie was singing about crawdads. Now I can't stop saying the word. Ah, I see. Crawdad. I see. Yeah. I see. I get it. Uh, you know, maybe we should play that song as an intro in the future. I'm just saying. The second season intro. Anyway, um, should we still do the other lifts? You know, we've talked about, hey, in a deadlift only comp, the main thing we're, well, I fucking I hope the main thing that you're worried about is your deadlift performance. You're deadlifting maybe two, even three times a week in a, in a single lift comp because you don't have the other lifts in play. But does that mean that you don't do them at all? Does that mean that we don't squat? We don't bench? We just like, literally only deadlift like what in in your mind what does that what does that look like i think that there's there's no reason to not have the other lifts in there having in having them in there in the context of being really fucking heavy and doing singles probably not the best move Mm. still having them in there because eventually someone's gonna do a three lift meet again and Mm. not doing the other lifts for 12 to 15 weeks is probably a great way of being a bad power lifter if you just stop yeah, doing upper body because you're only deadlifting, it's like, cool, you've just wasted 15 weeks because you can still progress, gain adaptations in those other domains whilst pushing the deadlift. Like, there's no reason to not do them. I mean, you, you don't have to. Not benching won't make your deadlift worse, but it'll make your bench a shitload worse. <laughs> yeah, and then when you come back to it, you're saying there's like a... a a regaining skill type phase. And if you haven't benched in 12 weeks versus just kind of keeping it at low volume, low RPE in the background, 
it's going to take you a little bit to work out again. Whereas if you kind of keep a little bit there, the minimum minimum amount that whatever, um, you know that that's that's going to be enough that when you get back to it, you can just kind of ramp up the volume and the intensity a little bit quicker, and you're gonna you're gonna find that much e- a much much easier process. So I guess it's a long term consideration as opposed to like an acute question of like you know is it is it a problem if I don't do them? And the answer is yeah. probably no. But it also gives you a chance was- to decrease fatigue in a different way. It's like, cool, if you're still doing a decent amount of squatting, oh, yeah. say through machines or other things, if you get to five weeks out and your deadlift's fucked because you're really tired, you can just completely pull it out. It gives you an avenue mm. to decrease fatigue by different means. Yeah, definitely. The, the other thing I was thinking is like, um, uh, you could use different, more constrained variations to, to limit the amount of fatigue that other ones are putting in. So rather than mm-hmm. putting in a competition bench press in a deadlift-only prep, you might do like a something horrible, like a you know four-second eccentric, two-second pause bench press or something that you are... Uh, you can still do fairly high RPEs on, but like the, the actual load that you're using is significantly less. Like you're going to be benching like half the weight or, you know, maybe not half the weight, but, you know, a fair bit less than, than using that variation than another. You, you might not even need to... To, to barbell bench press at all you might you might even decide hey screw it you know like barbell bench pressing messes up my shoulders a little bit so i'm just going to do dumbbell pressing during this deadlift only prep and um although it's not specific and you're definitely not going to be uh, that skill factor that you mentioned is is not going to be quite there it's still better than not pressing at all right um and and the same with the squat like on the squat we actually have a few different we have more options with it. Like rather than going, doing a low bar back squat for your competition squat, probably wouldn't be doing that because it's a pretty uh, high fatigue trade-off movement when you don't need it to be there. Um, so it for me with my lifters is a lift that I'll only put in there if they're prepping for a powerlifting comp. Any other goal, anything else, it's gone. Um, but you know, maybe high bar, maybe again adding a tempo and a pause to, to help constrain the load a little bit more. Maybe doing a front squat maybe doing a uh, uh, a safety bar squat. Like safety bar would probably most of the time be my go-to in this case. It's mm. going to be more upright because of the inter- anterior load, especially if I'm using a low heel, it's going to be a little bit more upright uh, and it's going to, which means it's going to fatigue my lower back um, less than a low bar back squat. Uh, it's going to hit my quads a little bit harder, which aren't really a limiting factor in a deadlift for most people. Obviously like, it can be if you're absolutely thrashing, but for most people, like some some safety bar isn't going to be huge uh, in terms of crossover, um, and it's still very constraining on on total amount of load that can be used whilst still training effectively at a, at a half decent RPE. So mm-hmm. um, you can get a lot of positive out of it without having to push it too hard, which and and still like put the primary focus on our deadlift, which I think on is that super point useful. as well. More specifically towards the deadlift only meet, a squat will improve a deadlift. Like, if you're still pushing some sort of outcome to build volume through the lower body, as long as you're not... Well, they're way more similar than you think. Although, especially for me, they're the same lift. (laughs) For most people. Like, you want them to be more similar. You know Mm. what I mean? Like, people have this idea in their head that, you know, a squat is an upright fucking, you know, Chinese Olympic weightlifter type thing. And it's just, like, super vertical. Um, And that's how it, quote-unquote, should be. But it's not the case at all in powerlifting. Like, we want to use whatever muscles All we can them. to lift the most amount of load to just to competition standards, you know, so a low bar back squat is, is further down your back. So it can, which allows for it to be more hingy while staying balanced through the feet. Uh, the lower you go, the more hingy it'll be. And, um, and you know, what's really hingy, a deadlift, like you're using very similar thing. You're essentially like, like I'm not saying you should try and deadlift your squats, but like a powerlifting squat, a lot of the time is, kind of like a hybrid squat deadlift. So like a lot of the muscles are, are being used and they will carry over to each other significantly. And that's why usually, uh, like we were saying before, within a training week for an SBD comp, there's going to be some sort of consideration as to the fatigue between them. Uh, whereas in a deadlift only comp, you can really hammer down on one. Mm. Yeah. Um, uh, what other thoughts have you got for the prep? For, for, for a single, only, like single lift prep? I think on that theme of choosing exercises the accessories can also kind of roll around and change a bit depending on the main goal of the prep you can somewhat yeah. push some of these goals concurrently you can say be doing hypertrophy stuff for upper body whilst pushing a deadlift only prep you can be doing some 
hypertrophy stuff for lower body and pushing a bench only prep. A lot of these things, because of the extra recovery that you get, you do have a lot more freedom. So it's a good space and a good time to think, okay, cool. What are my weakest links that I can devote a bit more love and attention to that will most likely be lighter weights anyway? Like say for someone, if you were doing a deadlift only, but you have absolutely trash shoulder mobility and trash shoulder range, spending Mm. a little bit more time doing some fruity variations or some less fun shit to try and resolve yep. those problems whilst you're pushing a different outcome is generally a good idea. In my head, a single mm. lift meet is a great time to do things that you suck at and you hate for the other lifts because it's kind of justifiable. <laughs> yeah. If you're doing like yeah, a big yeah. block of deadlifts, you're like, oh, fuck yeah, I get to max out deadlifts today, but I'm doing landmine press on day two, but that's all right because I get to fucking max out deadlifts on day three again. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, like single leg stuff or, or whatever. But yeah. like for me, the the thing that came to mind when you were saying that for me was like, when I'm in a in a comp a, a three lift comp prep and I'm doing low bar backs, the barbell back squats and I'm doing um you know, big arched kind of bench pressing, for me competition bench pressing, uh, both of those two put a lot of load through the shoulders and kind of lock up the shoulders and make it really hard to um, improve like the quote unquote function of the shoulder, like a, like your shoulders get really stiff and tight, which might sound like a bad thing, but it's actually you know, the goal of powerlifting uh, to some degree. Flaccid. So you want to, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so it can be hard to improve mobility and work on those factors whilst you're slamming low bar back squats and, and, and bench press. That, that stimulus from them is always going to be much higher than you trying to do like some fucking wall slides or some shit. With so body to weight. extend my analogy, if you imagine that the fatigue <laughs> from those big exercises is a really big crawdad, and your intervention is <laughs> yeah. one small worm, the crawdad's going to yeah. eat the worm. There's no way. Yeah. Your wall slides are just a drop of piss in the ocean compared to the big old crawdad that is the low bar squat. Mm. Yeah, he's going he's gonna to win that battle for sure. And uh, <laughs> man, just <laughs> getting me off here. But um, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's going to be hard. Whereas if you don't have low bar squats, if you don't have... Um, competition bench presses and, you, and you're just doing deadlifting, maybe it is a, a really good opportunity to get a lot of variation in movement through the shoulders and improve shoulder mobility, improve your, your ability to to actually fucking move your shoulder blades and stuff um, outside of it while you ha- whilst you have that opportunity. So like uh, the, the upper body pro- side of the programming might be, you know, absolute like kind of minimum effective dose of, of, uh, uh, of bench pressing to keep that skill aspect, which you mentioned before. So it's not so hard to come back into later. And then just lots of, you know, shoulder movements, presses, pulls in, in different angles to uh, help your shoulders move um, as best they can. Uh, you know, it's a good time to chuck in your, uh, to, if, if you need to see, if you have got something funky on with your shoulder, maybe seeing a physio or, or somebody who's qualified in that regard to, to go and like help get that back up whilst you're not also, because tr- everybody's seen a physio, you know, this guy that, you know, the guy that you, you know, I'm sure you've dealt with it before, like clients where they've got like a shoulder niggle in a prep and they're doing, you know, like heavy ass, like big squats and dead, uh, bench presses, deadlifts in a prep. And then they leave it to like when it starts hurting it at six weeks out to go like, oh, maybe I should see a physio about this and they can like, you know, dry needle it better. And it's like, well, maybe you should have done that 18 weeks ago or whatever, you know, when I said <laughs> at that maybe point, it's start already fucked. That. At that point, it's a management, you know, how can we manage this the best we can as opposed to improve it in any real way? Because like you said, the craw- the big craw- daddy, she's, she's whiz winning. Um, Physios are out there handing anyway. out worms at six weeks out. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, do it back then. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, do all that stuff then. Use 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 these kind of preps to work on other values. Uh, I guess is is what we've said in a in a very long way. Or um, to be honest, even just doing something that you really enjoy. Like I know for a lot of people, if they really love barbell overhead press, I mean, or biceps, no, really whatever. Loves that. But say there's yeah. there's one homie sitting in the corner like I love military press but my coach never gives it no, to me because it doesn't help my bench. Yeah, th- those people yeah, don't. You exist, hate yourself but... if. It... Yeah. <laughs> but hypothetically, you can do lifts that <laughs> may not be as yeah. beneficial to powerlifting, or if you just want to do like one thick arm day, who am I to judge? Yeah, yeah. Do what you want. 100%. Get in there. Do that, please. Get Obviously, I don't. <laughs> but um. I always say I do. I always say like, oh yeah, I'm going to do heaps of arms. And then I do like two sets of biceps and I'm like, this is so fucking boring. I don't know how people sit through like bicep workouts. I remember when I first Um, started training, I trained arms for like two hours, three days a week. 
I loved it. Yeah, Rich Piano, man. Rich Piano, you were just... You know, that's the next and... That's the next Nexus event. Eight Hour Arms. Have like a $100 prize cap. Last person to leave the gym wins. But you have to do all the protein <laughs> shakes and all the protein bars. <laughs> I don't think he did protein shakes. I didn't think he did BCAAs, but... No, he did protein um... shakes, protein bars, and drank BCAAs during the workout. I've studied this. I know what it's, I know what it's about. Just got to run the event. I have a feeling if we go back to previous episodes about shitting yourself like that is what's going to happen if you if you go down that avenue but anyway so my well, team who can not shit themselves but uh, let, let's move on to the final part of this which is choosing attempts is is there any uh, uh, you know difference in, in choosing attempts like we've so, already done a whole episode on choosing attempts so we won't recap that entire episode but but is there any difference for me this is a personal topic because I think if you're doing a single lift a single lift event and you're not going in there to eat and skeet, you're wasting your time. Like you are not yeah. doing a deadlift only meet and doing small jumps and conservative attempts. You're going in there to fail your last attempt. <laughs> <laughs> Great advice. But yeah, or yeah I try. can get around that idea of, of maybe push it a little bit harder. Like, you know, if there's a there's no risk Nobody's going to be like, oh, you know, like I need to get this light, you know, based on the, my best squat and my best bench press, we need this deadlift to win and stuff like that. Like, it's it's usually you're entering a single lift for fun and to to really, um, uh, you know, just just come in there and, and like you said, just yolo a little bit. But or to take unless your you're like a bench specialist and that's record. like all you do, maybe, yeah, <laughs> maybe jumping in and sneaking in that. But um, yeah, in terms of choosing attempts, yeah, I would say you can probably be a little bit more aggressive, like you said. Uh, you had you don't have you know deadlift only case um, squat and bench before it in a bench only case you don't have squat before it which is actually quite significant um, you can come into that lift fresh and just you know go all out of that one lift and um, and not worry about any fatigue that you might have like when I'm doing three lifts when I'm thinking about my attempts I know we did a whole episode on this but like on my deadlift uh, I always open a little bit I uh, like lower than what I probably should open because I think um, my thinking is like, well, you know, after uh, many hours of sitting around in the gym, having done uh, my squat attempts, having done my bench attempts, um, all that kind of stuff that I might be a little bit gassed by that point physically and mentally. Uh, so, you know, I'm going to just take the, the little bit of a safer option on this where, like you said, single lift comp, you're in there. You're fucking going hard. You got. You only got three attempts for the whole day, so gassed out should not be a fucking thing in in your mind whatsoever. Um, you can load up on all your caffeine in one time. I guess it's like a single lift meet. Yeah, got to space it out and not crash. But at the start of a deadlift only prep or a start of a deadlift only day, you take 700 milligrams of caffeine, two gastro, two gastro stop, and you go hard. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> all right, uh, we'll leave it there. We'll, we'll finish on that. Um, and uh, we'll talk to everyone next time. If you have any other questions on single lift preps, if you're doing one now and we didn't cover th- something for in some way, jump on the website, nextperformance.com.au, the podcast link up the top, scroll down a little bit and you'll see the podcast feedback form. Very easy to fill out, chuck in your name and and uh, and uh, we'll, we'll do either a whole episode depending on how in-depth the question is or we'll, we'll definitely make sure that we cover and get back to you um, the answer, that, uh, the, our thoughts on that. Uh, at some point. So, and the uh, next thanks performance for tuning in again. Crawdad shirt will be available shortly. <laughs> You're just coming up with all the apparel ideas. Yeah. Crawdad <laughs> shirt coming. Easy. Thank you for listening to Nexus Unloaded. Be sure to jump on our website to find details on everything mentioned on today's podcast, plus information on our coaching, mentoring, and gym services. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at nexusperformance.aus for any updates on what we are currently doing. See you all in the next episode.